well, good. I'm Mike. And I'm Emily. And we want to take a few moments to have a bit of a quiet time and consider how you're feeling. I want to, to think about how you're feeling and give yourself a sort of mark out of 10. One being not super, 10 being whoa, super duper. Now you've done that, have a think about how you feel physically. Same scale, one to 10, how do you feel physically? You don't have to tell anyone, it's, it's just for you to think about. Emily, how are you feeling? I'm feeling about a seven out of 10 today. Mm. I've eaten well, but I didn't sleep very well last night, so I'm feeling a little bit sluggish. Yeah. Yeah, I ignored my own advice and had a cup of tea too close to bed. Oh, a, str a strong brew, was a it? A strong brew, yeah. which is as much caffeine as a cup of instant coffee. <laughs> I um, I find it depends which part of my body. When it's my knees, they're usually like a three out of ten. Okay. <laughs> when it's my smile, ten out of ten. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna go for a quick walk to energise myself. All right, go for it. See you in a bit. See ya. All right. In the meantime, why don't we have a discussion about your physical well-being and how it's been since we last spoke about it? What aspect of your physical well goodness are you pleased with? What is your next challenge for yourself? Has there been a part of improving your physical well-being that you've enjoyed? Just a little reminder, the three aspects of physical well-being are eating, sleeping, and exercise. Pause! I feel much better. Yeah, you're looking freshly walked. Thank you. <laughs> you know what I've noticed, Mike? What's that? When I focus on making my body feel better, I have better feelings as well. Mm. And when my emotional well-being tank is full, I'm more motivated to get up and do better with my physical well-being. Yeah, it's amazing how all of our different sort of t well-being tanks, all those different ingredients, all link together. I'd like to tell you about someone who is a great example of that. Please welcome Simone Biles. What? what? Oh, okay. Emily led me to believe that we were going to have a real genuine Olympic athlete come on this video, but it turns out we never asked her to come. So we just got a little photo of Simone Biles. <laughs> Simone is an American, you can come up now. <laughs> Simone is an American gymnast who's competed in the Olympics uh, even this year, a few months ago. She's really, really good. Amazing. Her and her teammates trained really hard to get to peak physical fitness. Better than anyone, they were able to jump, spin, flip, dive, gymnast their way to the top of the gold medal tops. Watching them compete was pretty incredible. Yeah. But in the background, there was a lot of pressure on them. Yeah. After getting to the finals on one event, Simone decided to withdraw from the competition. She had been struggling with her breathing and feeling quite anxious. I remember on one competition, she was meant to do a, a double flip, but she only did a single flip and she thought, oh, I'm not sure about that. Mm. It's one more flip than I can do. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, you see, physically, Simone was ready, but emotionally, she needed to build her tank up a bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's really important about this real life story is that Olympic gymnasts don't push themselves too far, and you shouldn't have to push yourself too far either. Simone knew her body, and she realized something wasn't quite right, and she decided to step back, look after herself. There is a great ending to this story. After taking some time out, Simone later won gold in another event in the gymnastics. Just goes to show that listening to your body and your mind and looking after yourself is so worth it. Mm -hmm. It may take a while for you to understand what your body is telling you, but just keep listening, learning as you go. Yeah, I've actually got uh, uh, my own personal story of triumph all about this. Mm, go on. Well, when I was younger, I wasn't able to um, wiggle my little toe. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was. It's true. I wasn't able to move my wiggle, my, <laughs> wiggle my little toe independently of my other toes. 
You know, most people can't do that, Mike. Okay, well, I it, it mattered to me. So one day, I sat on the toilet for like an hour, <laughs> yeah. and I stared at my toe. It's a bit like, have you read Matilda? When she's staring at the glass, she goes, tip, tip, tip. So I stared at my toe, and I urged it to move, and then, whoop. I managed to do it. Do you want, do you want to see it? Oh, go on then. Okay. Um, but n normally I would not advise putting your feet up on the table here. But you know, just because it is so very uh, important. <laughs> okay. Here we go. You ready? Oh, I'll get there. I didn't. <laughs> Did you see it? Did you see that move? I'll do it again. Yep. Wow. Thank you. wow! Almost as inspiring as an Olympic gold medalist. I should have a medal for that. Mm. I, I was exploring my body. I was having a good time doing it. <laughs> We've been really silly about this, <laughs> but it is so good that you've got to know your body and you can look after it, including your toes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> if it's not clear by now, looking after your well-being is super important. I think that knowing your body and loving your body is one of the most important things that you can do, even if you are an Olympic gold medalist. So I hope that both of these stories of inspiration help you in exploring your physical wellness in your exercise, in your eating, and in your sleeping, and that you learn to really love what you've got. My top tip that applies to all kinds of well-being, but especially this ingredient, is to make small changes gradually. It's much easier to slowly build up healthy habits than to try and do a big transformation all at once. Great tip, Emily. Thanks. Yeah. I think it's time for a game. Yeah, sure, okay. Um, we'll do the alphabet game. Mm -hmm. uh, for each letter of the alphabet, uh, we want you to say something to do with physical well-being. Remembering eating, sleeping, and exercise. Uh, so, for example, A. Uh, apples, uh, acrobatic. Brilliant. B. Um, balance, basketball, bu Bible. Okay, Bible. Yeah, uh, C. Uh, creation, climbing. D. Dance. Brilliant, excellent. You got it right. So, you guys, we want you to do the whole alphabet. Uh, your teacher will say the letters, and you can say the answers. Go! Did anyone get one for Z? Zumba! Yeah! Zumba! I don't really know what Zumba I've never done Zumba. Done it it's a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, well done, everybody. I'm sure that you came up with great ideas. Uh, I'd like really now that we focus on the, the sleepy bit, the, the resting bit. So if you can just calm and breathe. Now, I do want to do a bit of sort of a, a meditative prayer. I'd like you to think about your body, your whole body. Just close your eyes and consider your toes, your feet, your ankles, moving up through your legs, your knees, calves, bottom, belly, chest, shoulders, out to your arms and your hands and your fingers and back up again, your neck, chin, face, hair. Thank you for our wonderful, amazing, weird and wobbly and brilliant bodies. And help us to know ourselves, know our bodies, love our bodies and live in our bodies even better every day. Amen. Amen. Great. Thanks very much, everybody. We'll see you another time to consider a different kind of well-being ingredient. Bye. Bye. <laughs>